Hello, mathematicians. Another video. Once again, back at Taylor series expansions, and yeah, I'm going to go through a few special ones, through a few trivial ones. That one right here, I would consider trivial. It's a standard exercise you're going to get in your um, introductory math class for physicists and stuff like this. And it doesn't quite matter if you evaluate this thing right here at zero, or if you just take the natural log of x and evaluate the Taylor series at one. It really doesn't quite matter, it's the same process, there's not going to be very much that has to change. So yeah, we're just going to take a look at the Max Lauren series thing right here. Okay, what do we have to do? As always, we have to take a look at the derivatives of natural log and see if we can find a certain pattern. So the first derivative of natural log of x, a uh, one plus x, is going to be, well, the outer derivative, so the derivative of the natural log, is going to be 1 over 1 plus x times the inner derivative. Well, the inner derivative in this case is just going to be 1, so this is easy. I want you guys to rewrite this right here as nothing but 1 plus x to the negative 1 power, okay? Differentiating this expression is easier than differentiating this. For most people, it's way easier to see if you write it with respect to certain powers. Okay, differentiating this a second time. It's going to provide us with. Okay, now we have to take the outer derivative, meaning dragging the one, the negative one at that, to the front, and then, well, reducing the power by one on this one right here, so one plus x to the negative squared, <laughs> and then take the inner derivative once again, it's just one, so that was easy. Then f triple prime, of x. Once again, dragging the exponent down, meaning negative one, negative one is going to cancel out. So we are going to get, and I'm going to write it like this, one times two, okay, <laughs> times one plus x to the negative third power. One more iteration and then you can already see the pattern that you get here. So the fourth derivative, yeah, four times prime, quadruple prime, it's nothing but, okay, dragging the negative three to the front. So this is going to give us negative one times two times three, one plus x to the negative fourth power in the derivative trivial once again. So if we continue this process, we are going to land at the nth derivative of f with respect to x. What is this going to be? So you see, we are going to have an alternating series, obviously, so negative one, not negative one, negative one, not negative one, blah, blah, blah. But when exactly do we have our negative ones? Well, on the second derivative, we have a negative one. So on even derivatives, so fourth derivative, negative one, we are going to have a negative one, meaning we have to have a factor of negative one to the n plus one or n minus one power. It, it really doesn't matter what you choose. Most people tend to use the n to the, uh, to the n minus one power. Okay, also we have this one plus x term. I know it's kind of useless deriving a pattern for the one plus x to the something term, but we are still going to do it just for practice purposes. Okay, on the second derivative we have negative two, on the third derivative we have negative three, so that's quite obvious, to the negative nth power. Okay, we, we don't really have an over, so um, just ignore that this is shifted up a little bit. Okay, on the third derivative, we have this right here, one times two, which is nothing but two factorial. On the fourth derivative, we have this three factorial term. So meaning we have n minus one factorial right here. Okay, so that's pretty easy to see. As always with Taylor and Maclaurin series expansions, we have to find those derivatives at a certain point, for example, one, if you deal with natural log of x or the derivative at the spot zero in this case. So for the zero case, we are going to get, well, this is going to stay how it is, this is going to stay how it is, and then we have one plus zero, which is just one to the negative nth power, so this is just going to be one all the time. Pretty damn good. But does our pattern hold for all the terms, or is there one odd term out, <laughs> the odd ones out? Okay, on the first term, we are going to get negative one to the second power. Okay, this is positive, this already holds. And yeah, then we have negative uh, one minus one is zero factorial, so this still holds, this is a one, so if you plug zero into here, this is just going to be 
a, a one in itself. So our pattern holds up until here, but on this term, what do we get? So this is natural log of one plus zero if we plug zero into here. So natural log of one is just going to be zero. So actually, we have to bring the zero of term to the outside. So f of x can be approximated as a Taylor series being, okay, so the first or zero of term you could say is going to be zero. We can actually get rid of this in a second plus a sum running from, well, naturally it's going to start from n equals to one now to infinity of, okay, then we have negative one to the n plus one of power. Then we have times n minus one factorial over n factorial, don't forget this term because we are having a Maclaurin series expansion. It's just how it is. We have derived the formula for this before. The general formula times x to the nth power. The cool thing is, what is n factorial? n factorial is nothing but n times n minus one factorial, meaning that's never going to be equal to zero. This and that is going to cancel out. And what we get is, okay, let's get rid of the zero. Then we get sum running from one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one power over n times x to the nth power. And this should be our Maclaurin series expansion for our natural log of one plus x. This has been the um, traditional way, but there's also a cool way to do it, Papa's way. I would like to take a look at this differently because if you take a look, if we differentiate the natural log of one plus x, we are going to get one over one plus x. Why not integrate this differential? So this is nothing but ddx of f of x. So if we integrate this, we're going to go back to our natural log of one plus x, okay? So integral of dx, one plus x. Okay, this is our task now. We're going to play a little bit of engineer physicist right here. We are not going to talk about convergence stuff and things like this or any theorems out of calculus analysis. If we take a look at this thing right here in a little interval, for example, from zero to one, we can actually evaluate this as a Taylor series expansion, this one over one plus X. We have talked about this because one over one plus X is nothing but one over one minus negative x, okay? So you see, and this thing right here, actually, if this is strictly between um, negative one and one, this x, then we can express it as our geometric series, the infinite case. Okay, that's actually quite easy. And negative x to the nth power is going to be nothing but, okay, then we have negative one, to the nth power times x to the nth power, sum running from zero to infinity. Okay, let's let's plug this new definition into here. Okay, so we get an integral of a sum running from zero to infinity of negative one to the nth power x to the nth power integrated with respect to x. And here it's not a given that our integrand is strictly positive, so you can't really make use of Fubini or Tonelli or whatsoever here but you can show the interchange of the sum and the integrals or the interchange of those limits using the dominated convergence theorem. So you can actually find a boundary for those partial sums right here and then you are good. So it's actually um, justified that you can interchange those. It's just a bit of handiwork. So this is nothing but the infinite sum running from zero to infinity, also negative one to the nth power is independent of x. Let's bring it to the outside. Integral of x to the nth power integrated with respect to x. Integrating this is actually quite easy. We're going to end up with sum running from zero to infinity, negative one to the nth power. Then we have x to the n plus one power over n plus one. And we know what this is going to evaluate to. This is nothing but the natural log of one plus x. So just a little observation. And yeah, it's indeed the same thing what we get down here. You can just make a shift of index. You can say that k is nothing but, um, no, that our n is nothing but k plus one. Okay, and then you are pretty much good. Then you should be fine. Ah, no. Um, if we take this as to the n minus one power, then it's going to make more sense then you can say that our n is nothing but k minus one, okay? 
also meaning that our n plus one is nothing but k, so you can just use a little shift of index right here. And then you are going to arrive at the same result. So if we start at zero right here, then our k, so plug me zero into here, k starts from one, then so from one to infinity, just what we had here. So it just depends on this thing up here. That's maybe the reason why many people use n minus one instead of n plus one. It, it really depends on your taste. Some people also like to bring the negative one to the outside right here to get this as the final form for natural log. Anyways, whatever you do, I thank you guys for watching. Also, what we did wrong, we forgot to add a little constant plus c right here, but that's not the point of the video right now. It's just about the Taylor series. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those stupid ass t-shirts I created or support channel on Patreon. Take a look at my website, take a look at my Twitter, take a look at my subreddit, whatsoever. And yeah, if you do enjoy those videos, just keep watching them and share those videos everywhere for education purposes. And up until the next video, have a flammable day, I guess. See ya.